And welcome back to Life's Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the hello, stranger hello. things, the fun things going on in the world of Linux, open source, mm-hmm. everything else. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Joe Bryant and Pedro Monteus, and everyone at home watching hello. us live after the fact, <laughs> listening on demand, all that fun stuff. Hey, everyone. What's going on? What's new? I had an adventure. I'll tell you about it in just a second. But as is always, Pedro writes, nothing done. So he's a mystery. What have you been up to? (laughs) Mostly work. (laughs) And I have to go into the office again tomorrow. And um, which is uh, sort of apropos because at work today, uh, I was told that while everyone else is getting a very nominal fee for you know the covid disruption um it's um that seems to exclude people that have been going into the office like myself and the rest of the it team here in cambridge so we're not particularly happy right now with the nhs at all <laughs> always always full of joy how about you joe oh boy i'm sorry pedro uh, government is <laughs> Always never so friendly (laughs) at times. (laughs) So um, tomorrow is Steve and I's uh, ninth wedding anniversary, although we've been together a lot longer. But I am looking forward to it. It's a a milestone in in our relationship (laughs) and wonderful. It's been a wonderful ride. And um, he's been getting me things. And one is this little item for my computer tech bench. And it is so cute. (laughs) <laughs> it is a penguin screwdriver set <laughs> how unique is that <laughs> i had to have it it has a, uh, you know it ha- has has <laughs> has the little hole that you put put the uh the different uh screw heads or the the bits <laughs> And it's and it's magnetic and it actually works really well. I was testing it yesterday <laughs> and I can put the little bits in there and they even store in the penguin's body. So it's really, really cute. I ah, mean, okay. I was going to ask if it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you can use it on its, its little iceberg <laughs> or in the body. <laughs> That, and it's just very cute. I had to show that off. So unique. Is truly horrifying. <laughs> 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 I'm no, if it was Saturday, I would have more comments about that. But no, yeah. no. <laughs> ha- have fun with the penguin screwdriver floating through your nightmares, uh, kids. Oh, uh, <laughs> man! So cute. I had to go on a bit of an adventure. I finally picked up a Focusrite device, uh, the Sapphire Pro Forty. It's sitting back here in the rack. I'm like, hello. We're using it right now. This is the part where I test it because I'm going to tell anybody if something works. It's going to go trial by fire, man. And man, this is why I do the, I do a show called Interfacing Linux, which is, I mean, I'm just trying to backlog some stuff and like, hey, let's get some documentation on some things. This is why I do the show, because I kid you not, um, I found out things about this device that only quoted searches in Google reveal. And what it reveals is like mailing list from almost a decade ago that I'm digging through, looking for images that are only available currently with a Wayback Machine. <laughs> As thumbnails. <laughs> As thumbnails, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I was talking with Pedro earlier. I was trying to figure out the uh, routing matrix, and I found, you know, just the thumbnail that was embedded in a page that was written in French. So I'm hard mode on top of this, <laughs> and I'm going through it, and I'm like, okay, I, I think... I, I need to reconfigure my matrix like that. Couldn't read it. It wasn't high enough resolution. So it was just like pixel pattern blurs. So I, I was doing a screenshot of my matrix, squishing it down in GIMP and trying to figure out which settings matched the pattern <laughs> of the pixels, which I did manage to get it to work. But more on that at 11. I'll have the information um, together mm-hmm. on that later. But <laughs> it's always a fun adventure. We do have some good news. I know we were talking Saturday about um, in the pre-pre-super shows. It's like, dude, do you update your uh, firmware on your devices in Linux? Which I rolled back. It's like, I, outside of my black magic hardware, hey. But um, I think we're alone in that, according at least to uh, the GNOME blog. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Go on, so, Jill. It's yours. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yay, we have laptops to show. <laughs> um, but but the Linux vendor firmware service has just me- reached a huge milestone. They've had 20 million downloads strong. And um, there's probably more than that, but they can't necessarily detect them all because of uh, business accounts and whatnot. But this is really, really huge. And, you know, for a lot of us that have used, you know, the um, the firmware updater application in Ubuntu and other distros, we know how important it has been uh, to us um, for updating our BIOS form- firmware to firmware for um, mice and keyboards and all the important things, <laughs> lots of important things. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, mice and keyboards yeah. are the big one that are yeah. still not there. <laughs> Where are you at, though? Because that's something we brought up is uh, I've installed that utility. I've installed the GUI for it. I'm like, oh, look at this living in the future. And yeah. um, it, it listed <laughs> off a few of my SSDs. I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> if you're doing a fresh install, by all means, do update your SSD. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. I, if you're like Nuke and Pave, yeah, Doc, I saw that. I have a. I wanted to get a color hug. I don't have a color hug because they were never in stock when I was trying to get a hold of one. But yeah, well, that's why Richard Hughes started the Linux vendor firmware service in the first place. Is because he he wanted drivers for his color hug color optimization um, calibration device for monitors, and you know that's something he needed. And without his tireless work with the LVFS and vendors, desktop Linux Linux would not definitely be where it is today. <laughs> His hard and, work. <laughs> uh, 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 it's just me being the usual negative Nancy, but um, remember when System76 wasn't going to use FWUPD and LVFS? Oh, <laughs> because yes. they were working on something that was going to be so much better and they got into a bit of a spat with Richard Hughes? Yeah, no, Pedro, tell me about it. <laughs> we covered it on the show. Uh, oh. Yes. <laughs> Several hundred episodes ago, but yes. <laughs> Several hundred. He says on episode 200. Well, yeah. about 100 episodes ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's good so, news. I'm happy to see it. It's a thing. Yeah. And um, try it. I'm, I'm not brave enough to. Mess, uh, but then again, mm-hmm. this is me. I have a very strict, not broke, don't fix policy. So laptops, laptops makes perfect yes. sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> definitely. And you know, without he he really created the framework for for you know, the vendors to now be putting Linux on their machines. You know, he he yeah. helped helped create that framework and including the story we're going to talk about in just a few minutes with Lenovo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, definitely keeping up with, you know, we were talking about updating firmware on an especially drives these days, SSDs and Vimeos and all that. But, okay, well, let's just go ahead and take a look at this. I'm going to talk about scrutiny, man. What is scrutiny? No, it's not that thing that you have, uh, which you should have. It's a smart monitoring historical trends and real-world failure thresholds. It monitors all that fun stuff. And look at that. It even has hipster glasses as a logo. That's so cool. So this is a web UI that's going to pull off Smart D. And you can just pull it up through, you know, a browser and like monitor your remote servers. You know, hey, that like box that you have on the other side of the room. Yeah, that one. Now, I think this is neat, but personally, I'm living in electric SSD land, so I don't really pay attention to smart. I'm just like, that's a suggestion. Hey, it's prefail, but I just put it, oh, took another box, prefail. I'm like, all right, whatever. Um, this is cool, man. I mean, if you just rather, you know, have a web UI for it. I didn't get a chance to play with it mainly because I got to the point of how do I get this installed? Oh, oh, <laughs> <Doctor>. <laughs> uh. yes. <laughs> to be fair, there was a, a thing <laughs> about usage. It's like, oh, Docker exact. Mm. Nope, never mind. We're good. <laughs> That's where I got. Then I was like, well, how do you install manually without Docker? Then it was like, well, um, Shrug emoji? We're working on that. Uh, Are are we getting old, Pedro? Do we need to tell the kids to get be gone from our lawn? Like, no, we're not Uh, using a container to install an application. (laughs) That's the thing. 
like you've said many times, containers make sense in a an environment that you need that thing to be working and you need it to stay working and you don't want it you don't want it uh, futzing around with everything else on the system. That's what containers are for. That's what containers should be used for. I guess if you're using this to monitor, but it is pretty rough around the edges, so you probably shouldn't be using it to monitor your production device. If you're just using it to uh, play around with it, yeah, give us an app image. Seriously. No. Use app images. Docker. <laughs> Come on, Grandpa. <laughs> I, I'm not installing Docker on the desktop. I'm sorry. I'm not. <laughs> the um, sp- if I had some spinny disks that were still spinned up, I'd definitely play with this. What, one of the advantages and possibly disadvantages of SSD is usually they're working one day and not the next. That is it's usually the controller. That yeah, goes. it's going to be the controller that dies. <laughs> mm. However, the good news is like. I did. Just mentioning this story probably has you um, in a disk utility or just pulling up your smart data. You're like, I wonder how bad my drives are. They're probably fine. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Oh, this is really wonderful for server side. I could have used it back in the days of uh, big render farms (laughs) that I had to set up. And what I thought was cool is in the Scrutiny YAML file, you can uh, send push notification, notifications via Discord, Telegram, Slack, Teams, and many other social networks. So I thought that was ingenious. That's, 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 that's going to be a great utility for IT. <laughs> well, I like the ability to have this set up and just log in over the web. So you're like, boop, all right, yeah. there yes. it is. It's the, it's, it's very the, clearly like the final goal heel, uh, heel. I don't even know what you get there, man. (laughs) The final goal here Mm. is to uh, have this be easily deployable in servers and, you know, that type of situation. Yeah, but they say it's a work in progress, still rough around the edges. Okay. (laughs) Oh, wait. Go play with it. There'll be a link in the show notes. And, um,. Hey, we mentioned Lenovo was uh, doing some stuff uh-huh. with uh, desktops a while back, uh, a couple of episodes yeah. ago, and well, it looks like this they're is... finally rolling out that laptop initiative. Yeah. Ooh. So, you know, we <laughs> talked about in July about Ubuntu 2004 LTS being certified to run on Lenovo laptops and workstations. Now those laptops and workstations will be selling with Ubuntu 2004 pre-installed. And this is this is really huge. This includes the ThinkPad T series, the X series, the L series, the P oh, series. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, we we got to give <laughs> and a rating. And ThinkStations. We have to give a rating to the, <laughs> of the photoshopped, uh, photoshopped or gimped <laughs> picture. Uh, no, that 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 one's the bad. lighting's a little off. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the lighting. Look at the table. The key, what about yeah. the keyboard, monitor the, is standing? The keyboard's wrong. <laughs> the lighting on the mouse is wrong. The reflection. Yeah, the angles are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, reflection... it's like that monitor slightly tilted forwards. <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant. The lighting on the monitor is wrong. The, it's, the angle's wrong. Big frightening <laughs> thing that gives away any of the lighting issues is the reflection under the case. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that was polished to a mirror shine. What are you talking about? <laughs> um, okay, refraction doesn't exist in this world. Uh, but, okay. <laughs> As you were, Jim. Jim. <laughs> yeah. So Lenovo knows its Linux user base. And whether it's be for AI, development, cloud, desktop, and of course, that is growing. And, you know, we love our ThinkPads. ThinkPads are the most loved and used laptops in Linux. Lenovo, community. I can save you some time on this part of the page. You just want all of them. Yes. <laughs> Which laptops are supported? Yes. <laughs> yes, lots of them. <laughs> so I have one one here. This is my favorite. It's This is the smallest one. This is the X130E series. That's 11.6 inch screen. It's the smallest uh, ultra portable laptop that they made. And it's one of my favorites in my collection. I have several uh, ThinkPads and I know uh, Pedro does as well. And... You know, Linux just runs beautifully on them, and they are so easy to upgrade and work work on. You know, uh, putting in new SSD drives or adding RAM. They're er, all the hardware is easily accessible, and it's the favorite laptop of a lot of Linux users, including those at the Southern California Linux Expo, where it is the number one laptop seen there in use. Oh, it's no longer MacBooks. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, um, well, the funny thing is at scale, the MacBooks were never as prominent. The at other other um, uh, community uh, Linux community conventions, they were, but not at scale. Uh, they that we've always had uh, <laughs> and IBMs and and Dells and Lenovos <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> so I did notice and that Lenovo <laughs> launched their. Um, I posted on my Twitter last night um, pre-orders, or it might just be regular orders for their new single screen foldable laptop no oh key- yeah no keyboard that's sweet 13 inch screen on the top screen on the bottom it's a sandwich it's a little thing a bun i was like oh that's neat maybe i could oh look at that it starts at 2200 dollars um <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> gen one man um, yeah I, I look forward to that product segment in three to Definitely. five years uh yeah, and it'll be nice to have someone else out there in the market to give Dell a bit of a run of, for their money when it comes to, uh, you know, having a nice selection of Linux laptops and desktops because it's the ThinkPads and the ThinkStations. Uh, but unfortunately, in my opinion anyway, um, mm-hmm. a, an X1 Carbon is not uh, an XPS competitor. It's just not. The XPS is so much nicer. Mm. It those are really nice laptops and Dell ever since they moved the camera back up to you know the top of the monitor where it should have never left from uh but yeah no, there there's there's just no comp- competition I want you to focus on the bright side Pedro though but when, <laughs> once you've established a business case of why at work you have to have a Linux laptop and they're like okay fine we're going to get you one mm-hmm. it's going to be supported and you're like, yes, okay, this is the System76 I would like. I'm like, oh, nah. here's the Lenovo that you're getting. <laughs> or the Dell. <laughs> or the Dell. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's the thing. That's always good to see, though, man, more the merrier, I think. And just, it, yep. you know, when when they originally launched this, they uh, had the, well, this is for computational and science. You know, we understand a lot of researchers and stuff need Linux on, you know, desktops and something. And they're just being open. You know, yeah. wider availability of like, hey, everyone, Jeez. you can run this. So that's brilliant. But we're done talking about laptops. Except for the Slim Book, or in this case, the <laughs> yes. elementary OS uh, image for uh, the Slim Books. Do and they really sell that monitor? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Apple can sue somebody. Um, yeah, it's. Um, that that that's Limbook's whole thing. Even that one laptop that they sent me uh, was very much trying to ape the uh, the MacBook Air, and it was their fault for doing that. That's why uh, I didn't like it very much. But <laughs> if you'd like to test the uh, current image for um, um, Elementary's uh, image for uh, Slimbooks, you can if you've already paid the money so at this point uh i'm just gonna wait if they decide to you know properly support it properly uh come out with it and make it publicly available i'll give it a try i don't have a slim book proper to test it with but i will absolutely um give it a shot but yeah it's it's the limb book it's uh, what they do besides rebadging um Clevos like everyone else is mm-hmm. they are a spanish-based uh linux laptop and desktop and apparently uh, <laughs> uh imac uh, looking aios well pedro what do you yeah. think the portuguese version would look like <laughs> bunch of cardboard <laughs> sticky tape <laughs> I like the looks oh. of them man I don't know so much about that monitor but you know hey yeah no th- they are uh, actually that one uh, right next to the iMac look like uh, is that very same model that we've seen tuxedo in system 76 release uh, the U variant Ryzen's yeah. laptops but it in, makes perfect so. sense i mean like if you brought up system 76 that's how you got to do it and you can't roll right out of the gate and just start designing your own laptops no, no. <laughs> and yeah clevos are pretty good to rebadge because they don't care yeah. <laughs> yeah well one thing i love um that elementary os is doing is that they're targeting targeting their low their os at laptops in the 400 to 600 dollars range which is really the sweet spot um, uh, Slimbook, both Slimbook and Star Labs uh, laptops both have 
have uh, those price ranges. And, you know, it really, I was just thinking about it, and it really makes sense with the popularity that elementary OS has had with new Linux users to have lower priced hardware to start with. Mm-hmm. And we, we, we yep. need more laptops in that price point. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Come on, we you know, we get to buy the foldable like two thousand dollar <laughs> yeah. Tinker devices, <laughs> XPS, X one carbon. <laughs> that, that's one thing that's never changed, man. Being able to jump two grand on a laptop is just as easy now as it was in the beginning. Yeah, mm. so, <laughs> yes. you can go crazy right now. There's Thanks, always Razor. that. Yeah. <laughs> so, Windows <laughs> subsystem for Lemon Linux. You look at that and you're like, man. That's a little too mainstream for my taste. I, I, I want to go with something a little more old school. DOS Linux. <laughs> Run Linux programs on DOS. And you're like, okay, you got me. How about DOS subsystem for Linux? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The WSL alternative for users who prefer MS DOS environments. DOS subsystem for Linux integrates a real Linux environment in MS DOS, allowing the user to make use of both DOS and Linux applications from, wait for it. A DOS command prompt. Yeah. Yo, dog. Yay. Um, <laughs> it's a DOS prompt that accepts Linux commands. I think that's someone's wet dream right there. <laughs> <laughs> From- <laughs> uh, yeah. What are your thoughts on this, Pedro? Because when I first saw them, I was like, is this memes? I mean, is there a practical <laughs> application for this? Look. Like I said, I'm pretty sure someone has been dreaming. They've been foaming at the mouth for years to get something like this going. Mm -hmm. And this just, yeah. Yeah. That person is really (laughs) happy right now. (laughs) Those are people who want to use the backslash. The backslash instead of the forward slash. (laughs) Yes. And, And to me, this is instead of. DOS MU for Linux, the application. This is Linux MU for DOS. <laughs> and uh, now you can run Doom Linux in DOS. <laughs> think about that. <laughs> the only times I, I think about it is like, how many times have you been on a um, Windows command prompt and hit LS? <laughs> yes, I do that um, all the time. Yeah. A bit of a uh, <laughs> little trivia here as someone who unfortunately has to do <laughs> a bit of PowerShell. LS works in PowerShell. Yeah, it does now, yes. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> because they just looked at Bash and said, oh, that's neat. Uh, we're going to do that, but worse. And they did. <laughs> this is weird. This is weirder. <laughs> I like this. This is, I don't know. This is a problem in search of a solution. I'm I, my favorite type of thing. So um, this, however, up next, uh, could possibly be a solution to well, for some people. Mm-hmm. Well, there's mm-hmm. it's certainly an improvement on what is currently available and known as Tmux. This is 3mux. Uh, it's, uh, it's basically, if the name doesn't immediately give it away, it's Tmux with i3 um, key bindings. So uh, if you're used to using the i3 uh, tiling window manager, you know exactly what you need to do to... Uh, split the terminal windows and arrange them in the right position, switch uh, switch between them, do all of that. This will do it. And that's not a bad thing, if we're being honest. Uh, making Tmux a bit, you know, friendlier and uh, have a, um, a key binding scheme that's recognizable, at least by people who are familiar with i3, that... That's all good, in my opinion. <laughs> Come on, Pedro. I uh, love looking at this because I see this. I see the efficiency in the workflow. It allows me to lie to myself and say that it would prevent me <laughs> from having 20 plus virtual terminals open on my desktop. Uh, not at first, it wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. If uh, if you start using it and you start getting used to it, uh, your brain starts to remember, wait a second, I don't actually need to open a new window. I can just do like control shift eight. Boom. Done. Dude. Um, okay. That, that's right up there with like, how, how, how long have we had tabbed virtual <laughs> terminals? Yes, but the tabs are inconvenient because you still have to switch between tabs, so okay, it's much okay. easier to switch between a Ladies window and gentlemen, than boys a tab. And girls, Pedro is still in the lying to himself phase. <laughs> uh, no, I'm actually using console. I've given up on Terminator now because console mm. just uh, does all the uh, window splitting at the split terminals with yeah, simple key combination. And it's all there. It's all on screen. I don't need to switch between windows to see the different outputs of things. I can just have them running. That's good. 
<laughs> nice. Well, I like the fact that it's using key bindings like the i3 window uh, tiling manager. And this is really great if you're using uh, Pop! OS and i3 mode or Rogolith Linux distros and, and its i3 integration. And, you know, this is... This is really cool. I'm actually thinking that this will, <laughs> three mucks might make me switch from extra term, which I've been using for years. <laughs> so I think this is a really, really cool and convenient. And I already know all the i3 uh, um, key bindings, so it's perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just making something like tmux that much more user friendly. I'm 100% exactly. behind that. <laughs> yeah. Come on, man. I, I need a GUI for my terminal. <laughs> Wait, we did learn. That, that was a great, like, wait a minute. Emojis? Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. That, that was a we collective. Emojis are in like, the what? terminal now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Arthur and it was saying in chat, console and Tilex rules. Yes, I love them too. There's actually so many good good uh, consoles that fit this description. The best but console cool is retro the term. one you have. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. That's, that's I love 120 cool retro term. megabytes. LCD burning. And, and the classic <laughs> E-term from Enlightenment. That's still one of my favorites. <laughs> so what is Record RTC, Joe? Yeah, this is really interesting and and really awesome. It's Record RTC is a WebRTC JavaScript library and extensions for audio video recording of your camera, screen, and mic audio. And it can be used on a server or locally or just from the web link posted in the article. And it it was really really easy to use it even worked on um in android on chrome and firefox on my phone mm -hmm. and um, i i tested it on chrome opera firefox and firefox on linux and um, on ubuntu and it worked beautifully there and what's really cool about it is you can record um, not just your your classic 1080p or 720p or 480p, but also ultra HD resolution, as well as 60 frames per second, and um, PCM audio, high quality PCM audio. So I was really impressed with this this uh, utility. And um, once you record the video, you can save your video to disk, or you can also upload it to YouTube. And you can use the scripts to um, bring in several cameras at once. I was reading through some of the scripts and some of the neat things people were doing with, with Record RTC. I thought all of that's kind of beautiful and <laughs> very helpful, very functional. But Pedro, you discovered the killer feature. <laughs> it records gifts. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, actually, I was just trying around, much like Jill. It's like, okay, yeah. let's see the options. Uh, full screen. I can do MP4. Oh, GIF. All right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, if you just want to do a nice. quick GIF type of situation, you just want to record. Okay. Set up the canvas here. You do this, do this, do this. There, there's two megabyte GIF you download. Boom, done. <laughs> okay, I got a legitimate question for both of you. Um, I didn't get a chance to play with this. Sell me on it. What do I actually do with it? You uh, you already have OBS set up to do far more than this. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is for people who don't have OBS already set up. Okay, yeah, so you can I'm do, sitting you know, around without desktops. OBS. Uh, <laughs> do I use it for recording? What, what's the use case, as I'm asking? Because I just yeah, really didn't get a chance to look it. into it. Yeah, you can use uh, full screen recording, same way that uh, OBS does. You can set up a, uh, a canvas to only record a portion of the screen. Uh, you can uh, basically, just like any WebRTC like Jitsi, uh, it, the moment you try to share um, the screen to do either full screen or canvas, it'll go, oh, do you want to give this permission to... Um, record your stuff and yeah that works very much like uh the uh, jitsi screen share and whatnot but yeah it is basically for someone who doesn't already have obs set up or they don't want to learn obs for some reason this is something that they can just have a chrome extension there's a chrome extension for it uh it's open source so if you want to build a firefox extension right ahead so do you think this um, would be helpful for people in chromebooks Yes, yes, definitely. The, yeah, the, definitely. This is the way to do it if they don't want to use it. Or <laughs> Considering there's no option since, uh, B. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are a few other options for screen recording in the uh, the Play Store. Yeah. This <laughs> is open source, so it's probably a bit more trustworthy. Mm -hmm. Quite possible. Yeah. <laughs> and it works at a web page on a web page. <laughs> talking about OBS. There is a brand new hot stinky release. Mm -hmm. 260 is out. There's been a couple of RCs. We definitely had a chance to play with them. I've been keeping up with it. Bunch of fixes in this if you, you know, do your control F Linux. Like what's going on? Oh, well, they've updated the browser source more than 11. I'll let you, uh, the Pedro talk about that. They fixed an issue with the always on top, sometimes not working with the projectors. And apparently there was an issue with the uh, cameras, you know, with the uh, VL or V4L2 um, not responding correctly to your pan and tilt controls. So all of that's been sorted. And there, was there an issue with the preferred language could not be detected correctly? Huh. Mm. Didn't know that. But. But, 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 there's a gang of bug fixes, all that fun stuff, performance improvements, da 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 blah, 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 blah. I need you to keep in mind as hard as you can. Um, the only officially, Pedro, where's the only official version of OBS located? Uh, PPA. The PPA? <laughs> and their website. <laughs> Which links you to the PPA. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> But yeah, it's uh, I didn't stream yesterday. I didn't use version 26. I did see the update like two hours before the stream and I posted on Discord. I said, no, I do not like to leave dangerously. No, I told um, you. That was, you had way too much lead in time. You needed to wait another 45 minutes, then try to install it. Now, here's a legitimate question that I had for Pedro. Uh, two of the big things that were supposed to be included with 26 on Linux. One, the big one, is the inclusion of the Linux browser. Very common question you mm -hmm. know like hey i've installed obs where's my browser source up until it's there this <laughs> you had to install the linux browser plugin which has been discontinued for like the last two years is out of date just barfs memory but it's included in this now right in it PPA. is and you yep i just installed the stable ppa version and it is there and i wasn't sure if that was still the plugin but then I saw the plugin at the bottom of the list, so no, it wasn't. <laughs> uh, but no, if you actually try to add a new element to the scene, uh, OBS gives you that list of all the other elements that use that, uh, whichever one you picked, uh, and you could just add a copy of it. There were no other elements, despite me having four browser sources mm -hmm. in that scene. So yeah, no, that's that's the new thing. That's the uh, the browser. It's pretty option. nice. It's That's there. good. Another <laughs> thing that has been included is I did a video on it maybe a month ago is the RN noise plugin, which is you know, ah, if you nice. want to do noise removal, you add that as an audio filter. There's always been the speaks, but now RN noise, it's right up there with RTX voice kits. So um, you can give that if you have a noisy background, give that a try. Um, send me some email. Let me know how it works for you. But that's awesome to see. Get out there, test it. OBS is awesome. It's a fantastic project. And uh, yeah, I just want to give it a mention. So, something I have to do. So you see all these uh, whizzy doodads over here to the right. They're called control surfaces. People think, oh, they're mixers. Nay, hey, they're not. And they're just empty hollow boxes that are plugged in that control software, you know. But it's physical touch controls. There's an entire industry for that, especially with audio, because humans like their knobs. Mm, Not making that joke. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you already did. <laughs> no, I didn't. You, you filthy-minded individual. How dare. Um, <laughs> Humans like their knobs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really? Knobs. Pedro, knobs like I have on this control surface for which I was referencing, you <laughs> filthy-minded individual. <laughs> Jeez. So, this is Wednesday, not Saturday. <laughs> so you... Are you happy? Are you happy now? You've just corrupted everyone listening. <laughs> so let's talk about this. Um, this is how I control Adore. Adore is the digital audio workstation that I use primarily because even though it's not uh, in, for the intended use. Hi, I'm Vin. I don't use things for their intended use for live mixing. And that's what we do. Now, um, if you wanted... You think about like you have like mixers, you know, you get your mixer bars and all that. You would definitely have to like controlling that and setting up. You'd be using your mouse and you click on things and oh, I need to, you know, adjust the gain or whatever trim volume levels. 
That's not bad if you're setting it up once, but if you're trying to do it live, that can become a nightmare, especially if you're trying to do a show. You can only click on one thing at one time. Control surfaces give you controls of all your faders and your knobs or whatever you want to program into it. These are not cheap. So one thing you might not know about Outdoor is Outdoor um, with the 6X series has a web server built into it that you can ring, 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 banana phone and pull up a banana control surface. So I wanted to give this a little bit of a mention. This is open stage control. As long as you have a web browser, you got this. You can tie into it, which means you can do it from a tablet. You can do it from your phone. And, you know, it. all you have to do is enable the OSC and Outdoor. And boom, give it the URL. They'll find it. No place like home. And that's it. That'll give you fader control. You can do trim controls. And they're definitely working on adding some more stuff. I thought that was brilliant. It's really neat. Neither of these two care. But, hey, maybe somebody does at home. <laughs> It does look neat. Good for Vin. <laughs> that doesn't affect me at all. I already got the hard work. <laughs> but this could be handy if, okay, say you're on, you're doing a um, recording on like stage and you got mix minuses set up for like the guitarist or the bass player and whatever. And your mix minuses, you know, you, you want to hear everything back but yourself or whatever custom mix. you am like, okay, on your phone, pull this up. Here's your volume. So you can adjust your own volume. Per individual, I mean, yeah, that's stuff like that. That's brilliant. I like seeing this stuff on Linux because you think something like, hey, what about Xair from Behringer and stuff like that? That's proprietary closed source. We can do this with open source because we're awesome. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Speaking of proprietary closed source, <laughs> we need Microsoft. Uh, well, this, this one doesn't fall Linux, into. But... Yeah, it does. Yeah, the... <laughs> okay, well, I suppose it, it, it does. does but... It does actually and indirectly, yes. <laughs> Not yes. Even a Inadvertently. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So Windows XP source code that had already been shared uh, incessantly among some of the most devious actors uh, on the interwebs has now been made public. And yeah, it's basically Windows XP with the uh, Service Pack 1 um, is what was leaked. And I am still curious to see because I've read some of the articles and they say, oh, there's like the source code for Windows Media Player and Windows Media Center and this and that and the other. Okay. How about the NT kernel? Mm-hmm. Is the source code for the NT kernel mm-hmm. there? Because I'd like uh, the wine people to have a look at the uh, NT kernel source and figure out how they're doing things so we can get some I other things. I would rather they didn't <laughs> so Microsoft wouldn't have an excuse to go after them in court. Uh, that's the thing. Don't copy anything. Just see how they're doing it so that you can figure out exactly how anti-cheat software is hooking to the kernel. You don't understand how you have to legally do a clean room implementation. You would get sued out of existence for doing it that way. Cool theory, bro. That's all I'm saying. It's, it's, don't practice That's that. unfortunate. Yeah. You, you're not, you can't take anything from this. And the Wine Project has definitely walked out and said... We don't work with anybody with anybody in contacts or stuff like that because guess what? They don't want a low earth low earth orbit suit cat to hit them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's all reverse engineered, it's clean roomed, and yeah, stuff like this, I don't know. For archival reasons and morbid curiosity reasons, that's probably cool. I think some people have yeah. speculated and they're like, hey, there's no point in rewriting stuff that works uh, out of curiosity. How much of this code it might still be floating around in Windows 10? Hmm? No, uh, definitely. Most of the NT kernel, right? Yeah. <laughs> still the same kernel. <laughs> <laughs> well, for those of us who've been in computing for many, many years, uh, this doesn't surprise surprise any of us a bit, especially since Apple with OS X and and Microsoft with, with Windows and DOS were essentially trying to copy Unix and the Xerox. Alto computer. The first, uh, com- the Xerox Alto was the first computer with a GUI. And uh, um, uh, like Ven was saying in, in the notes, it's a good thing that they did because Xerox had no plans to bring it to market. Yeah, they wanted to keep it, you know, open. <laughs> and, no, and, and, they and, tried to get Xerox <laughs> to actually make a product out of it. And Xerox is like, look, man, our corporate lead time for yeah. new product development cycle is about 11 years. And they said, no, nope, we're never going to do anything with it, deal with it. <laughs> Yeah. So that's why they were inviting people. Hey, come look at this. Because if you make something cool, you want somebody to do something with it. 
Yeah. Well, I actually, there's one right in my neighborhood because it was partially developed in, in my uh, neighbor right next to Torrance, which is El Segundo here in uh, the suburbs of LA at the Xerox plant. So there's one in there at their museum and it's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> so, right on, right yeah. on. Hey, I want to thank each and every one of you for being pretty cool. You're helping us out. You know, that's how we do the show, man. You know, you're the driving force behind that. Supporting us at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. How was that for a shameless plug, Pedro? That was very good. Pretty actually. smooth. <laughs> pretty smooth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we got merch and stuff like that. If you want to wear us on your body, so we even have stickers with terribly yes. naughty words on them <laughs> and um, t shirts. And I, I need to go ahead and get the. Um, Heck, elks beanies out and roll those out because I want one for myself this year. But uh, thanks uh, for letting us do that. And if you do um, find it, find it in your heart to kick us a buck a week, you do get access to our Discord. We got a custom RSS feed for podcasts. We do an extra show every week uh, just for the people helping us out and um, access to game streams. We do a lot of stuff. I'm going to be throwing um, my adventures in Focus Right Land. That video will probably be up. I'm not going to promise you this week, but you'll get an early crack at it mm. before anyone else um, to kind of look over it and help me file any rough edges off. But hey, thanks again. Stick around. Your name is going to be in the credits. We got to get Yay. into a slice of diabetes. Um, <laughs> that one That's looks like it's malfunctioned. Pie. Yeah. That's it's a, a puppy. meat pie. Yeah. I like yeah. how both it of them like can't. looks like a shepherd's pie. Or... They just can't read. <laughs> um, in the bottom right hand corner, is, where, are you at home are reading. It says classic Apple. Oh, it's Apple. Okay, never mind. <laughs> but cool, oh. cool guesses, bro. Cool guesses. It looks like uh, okay. pecan. <laughs> yeah, it looks like there's meat in there. Well, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What do we got up this week? Up this week, we have. Argon 1 M.2 case for the Raspberry Pi 4. And uh, this one, well, what it does is that uh, instead of just taking M.2 uh, PCIe SSDs, it offers uh, M.2 SATA support and full-size uh, HDMI ports because if you have a Pi 4, chances are you've probably already broken uh, one of the teeny <laughs> tiny little... Uh, micro that's why they gave you two <laughs> hdmi it's just... a backup <laughs> yeah but it is it's a very nice case uh it's uh what does that the plug top the it... uh two usb things happen is that just that's you... the usb pass through oh that okay is what... yeah. i thought that was just like if you were scared of the color blue you could go right there <laughs> uh... no, it, 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 admittedly not gonna lie that looks a bit jank because that's the pass through <laughs> that's going from the usb3 to um the m.2 uh riser card at the bottom mm. and it, yeah no it build that in no, seriously no, <laughs> so what what's nvme speeds at uh no, over 3.0 uh 3.0 it's like sata <laughs> Right on. It's like 300 megabytes a second ish. <laughs> so, so what you're saying is I probably don't want to like throw like the hottest Gen 4 into this. And... It'll probably work. Oh, I'm not saying it wouldn't work. Just... <laughs> it'll just be a terrible waste, but it'll probably okay. work. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's um, at this point, the only thing that that case really needs, you know, outside of a better uh, solution for powering the M.2, uh, it's uh, active cooling. Because yes, well, the top is all metal and uh, the case itself acts as a pretty good heat sink. It active cooling. Yes, you've said that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this, this case is really awesome, but I still prefer the case from a couple of weeks ago that we covered that that's a full gamer case with all the blinkies. <laughs> And fans oh, and yeah, everything. The, the, the custom made 3D printed one, yes. Yes. <laughs> so be, where yeah. does one active the cooling? Uh, they <laughs> could have easily, like, the, see the slotted bit at the back? They could have just put, uh, like, not point okay, eight. Maybe, uh, I, I, maybe I misunderstood you. Does this require active cooling? Or not? It doesn't, but oh, it's a okay. Raspberry see, Pi 4. Thank you, Pedro. <laughs> thank you, Pedro, because I was thinking that you were saying this has active cooling, to which I went, yeah. where? <laughs> <laughs> I thought, when you, where you asked where, it's like it could go on the back, but no, it doesn't have active cooling. No, it needs no, it. No, no. Don't listen, man. Um, 
but just get an extension cord, put it in the ice box like a normal person. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, no. If it had like a space, and yeah, no. Given how big like the slanted top there is, you could put a thin sixty mil fan in there. Mm-hmm. It absolutely could work. So please, because the Pi Four, it gets a bit toasty, like ADC toasty. Mm. Oh, okay, so, so <laughs> this is going to be. You can pre-order it currently for forty-five watts sneaky cash. So yep, that's not outrageous yeah, for a bike nice. case, and it looks like it's well made. It absolutely, it, it isn't. Looks and like it's very well three D rendered. I should be perfectly honest. <laughs> <laughs> it looks very similar to the previous Argon case. Mm. It's uh, it's not their first sort of a uh, dance uh, around pie cases, and the previous one was. Um, was very highly regarded as a case that offered a lot of features. Uh, heck, this one actually lets you put in a full-on um, two-and-a-half-inch SSD in it using the same very janky nice. USB pass-through. Uh, but, yeah, yeah it's... <laughs> <laughs> if it fits tight, it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Pedro, what if I have just discovered um, refrigerator pie cooling and it's changed my life and I need to tell you about it? it would be the best way well uh you can learn since you're probably in a very hot place you could probably learn how to send smoke signals uh, hopefully any one of us is close enough to where you wait are minute, so we can see minute, you. did you just try to imply that it, it's uh, you you only have access to fire in warm places uh no i'm just saying that it's easier <laughs> it, oh it's easier just to fire so when it's warm because that's how that okay yes. <laughs> well, it is. Pedro, you win. I'm not. I, my brain refuses to even unwrap that. <laughs> Good. <laughs> but yeah, no, the best way to get in touch with us is to use the contact form, LinuxGameCast.com. You hit the contact button and fill the form. Uh, make sure LWDW is the show that you pick. Otherwise, it, make sure it might you're be considered- warm so you can drop some spicy words. No. Yeah, you need that <laughs> uh, finger LW. dexterity, which if it's cold, it's probably going to be harder to type because your fingers will be stiffer. Pain Pedro lives in the dark ages where lighters don't exist. I used to smoke. <laughs> I used to carry a lighter with me. <laughs> okay, so, like, I don't know. I don't know what to say. <laughs> LWDW is the show that you want to send your feedback to. Oh, that's what you meant to say. So, last week, Pedro was uh, just doing what he does, giving big gnomey hugs, uh, saying, man, gnomes so awesome, I love it, I can't get enough of it, I just want to be covered in gnomes. And Mike, oh. Mike wrote back and he's like, yo, let me, let me tell you about gnomes, man, let me tell you about gnomes. He's like, I'm running gnome three. I think I might have been, and I was like, I don't get gnome. Uh, as the desktop, I love what the GNOME project's doing. That moon interface is beyond me. And get off my lawn while I'm yelling at this cloud. So, writing GNOME 3 on 2004, it's like I generally like it. But I wish they wish I could say I didn't have any issues with extensions because Jill was like, I have so many extensions. <laughs> they've, they've been hit or miss. You know, on their bright side, I've learned how to install extensions from GitHub because GNOME can't seem to cope with the updates. <laughs> I'm all my name uh, postscript. P.S. Uh, I'm <laughs> glad Pedro digs the Velcro things, man. Pedro yeah. loves Velcro things, man. You should see his suit. Well, um, I like these Velcro things. They're very nice. Yeah. He likes his hook. <laughs> his, his, his giant Velcro suit. Uh, keep up the good work, <laughs> Mike G. Yay, Mike G. Yeah. Well, I mean, to that point, I yeah. I've not experienced it because my. Full, my 100% legit, I'm not, <laughs> not doing this for effect. My total experience with GNOME 3 is opening a terminal and installing XFCE. But yeah. Which is probably the best experience anyone can have. I, <laughs> yes. it, it's not <laughs> an uncommon Fox thing or because <laughs> I've heard enough internet and enough people say, yeah, you have to install a bunch of extensions if you plan on using it. Yeah. yeah that, that was my whole point. Uh, yeah last week about this was you need the extensions to make GNOME 3 have the same basic functionality that GNOME 2 used to have. So it's good that they are finally paying attention to the extensions because those extensions are the only reason that they have as many uses as they currently do. Well, maybe they need like the basic <laughs> pack-in extension pack, you know, I'm like, hey. But, uh, 
that that's actually very easy to find out nowadays. You just download the uh, default version of uh, Ubuntu mm-hmm. and uh, open GNOME tweaks and see, oh, these are the extensions that are installed. Okay, that's that's your bare minimum. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And I, I we couldn't were hear you. I finished point. typing in yeah. get access before I... <laughs> <laughs> we, we were making the point last week that a lot of these extensions should just be included in the OS. I mean, in the, yes. in the window manager. So um, I think mm-hmm. they're thinking about that over at GNOME. And that's Finally. a very good thing. <laughs> yeah. Be interesting. But it's taken a while, but GNOME has improved so much. You know, the speed speed at which it flows, um, the visual quality, everything has really, really improved. And I think this is kind of the last big thing, if they could tackle that extensions. <laughs> well, uh, hey, if you want to tell us about your speedy, flowing, liquid desktop, uh, send us a <laughs> message. But we got to get out of here for today. So I'm going to pull up some music and uh, we're going to roll some credits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wrong credits. Uh oh, <laughs> yes. Yes, they are. <laughs> Those are the Linux Gamecast weekly credits from Saturday. <laughs> That's okay. It's just a little preview. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this actually. Uh... Yay! All our beautiful executive producers are Theron, Empty, The Atomic Ass, Mike G, Barbrant, Aldius, Mac Geek, Scott, Frostclaw, Haplo, and Foxdog, the only Tiki. And some of them are in our chat right now. (laughs) And our beautiful producers. (laughs) Seriously, every single one of you are awesome. Thank you. Oh, wait. Now now the the actual credits begin. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Now we have our LWW credits. (laughs) I made them. This is called I Don't Want to Fix It in Post. Uh, (laughs) Oh, it was intentional the whole time. Okay. No, no post editing. <laughs> Just do it now. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Did you two talk yourselves out on the first set of credits? Aw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a full minute <laughs> of first yes. set of credits. <laughs> <laughs> We love you. Keep those penguins marching. <laughs> waddle, waddle, waddle. <laughs> <laughs> waddle, 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 waddle. Down the road. <laughs> speedy penguins. <laughs> Not so speedy waddling down the road. <laughs> <laughs>